You know, he's happy in the LPL. He's doing really well. Yeah, hey, who's to say he can't come back, all right? <laughs> who's to say he can't come oh. back? Uh, Khan's retiring take, coming up. Uh, again, just put it out there. But uh, look, I mean, in those games, he played Jace, right? And he played full damage cannon, which he did crush. Uh, yeah, he, he played like no stopwatch cannon as well, which would be exactly what our friend Valdez uh, would want uh, from anyone on the Rift, to be perfectly honest. But here we are on to uh, Champion Select for this game. And Draven going to be the first one to be banned away from Han Sama, of course, obligatory against the gentleman that is so very good at it. And the cat on a book taken away as well. Thank you, Rogue, for that. And after what Rogue showed against Dommon, uh, I'm going to be watching this game with uh, specifically how they play out the mid game because obviously I think Hans Sama had a standout performance in that game, able to apply so much pressure repeatedly, solo kill, ghost and or barrel, uh, and really showing that Rogue, you know, coming into the group, everyone was like, oh, Rogue and C9, good luck, but then they actually look good. And yeah, they didn't win the game again, Don one, but uh, they really made them sweat. And we know how hot that can be. So the resilience of Rogue that they showed in that mid game, I think might be important to FBX because even though FBX haven't looked as good as we have expected of them. That's got to turn at some point, surely. Now, yeah. they've banned the Twisted Fate. They get to pick up this Rise. And for the first time of the group stage, Rogue is not going to be able to play the Nami Lucian. So you're not going to get to see Han Sama on that Lucian, not going to be playing that, that duo this time around. So it's going to be a completely different look here on the red side. They do go down that Misfortune path for the first time we see her tonight. And then we'll get the Lee Sin pick here as well. The question is, will they match this with a Silas uh, to, to deal with that Rise? We haven't seen that pairing so much tonight here. Uh, and I'm curious to see if Rogue wants to pick it up. Yeah, well, it is going to be two very high priority picks. I love that they banned the Graves and the Yumi. With the, the desk was talking about meta read, right? And I think as far as red side bans are concerned, these three look pretty well read uh, to me. One of them even has a book, for goodness sake. As the uh, Jin and the Leona taken away, very standard bottom lane here for FPX. We still don't necessarily know where the rise is going. Some flexibility there, but maybe Doinby isn't going to be a hipster in this particular game as Larson gets the very high priority LeBlanc. Yeah, Lee Blanc uh, combo that goes way Lee back. Lee Blanc, back. I get yeah, it. That's, yeah. that's, that's, <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's uh, good one. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah, I really appreciate Oof. it. Um, but it's a pick that has a lot of skirmishing power, makes damage, can snowball incredibly well. And again, looking at that Domlin game, uh, one of the main reasons why that game took as long as it did is was because Larson was able to pump out an insane amount of damage in team fights and wasn't afraid to get as close to death as humanly possible, as long as he made sure that he got his mark. And against FBX already, like with that Jin, we've seen a lot of teams really kind of revert back to what we saw in 2020 so often, kind of leave the Jin on his own, he's fine. And once his skirmish breaks out, he'll just get the Chrono Call going, maybe throw out a W and a oh, team with as much mobility as this, I think can really threaten that Jin. And if you are able to do that consistently, should work out very well. Now, I like this Nami pick because it's something, well, not necessarily going to be locked in here. There's a lot of CC that they're looking for. Obviously, the Rakan and the Rel, two great ways to set up bullet time, especially in team fights. Can you see it in lane as well? Um, are taken away. So, looking for another engaged support here. It looked like we'll actually go with the safer Braum pick in the end. Wow, Trimby cycled through so many fun champions and then landed on Braum. Yeah, it was like the ultimate buzzkill there, but. Yeah. <laughs> a little Speaking bit of a shame. Of fun champions. Yeah, let's see whether it is just going to be, like, this would be extraordinarily cut and dry here for FPX if they lock away something like a Jace yeah. here for Noggery. Um, that would put the rise, of course, in the hands of Doinby, definitely his most famous champion. And Tian, thinking about the Viego here as well. And I feel like in the last game that we saw, very standard drafts to come through from LNG and from the Mad Lions. And FPX have done the same thing once again with Rogue following suit. Let's see whether there's going to be an interesting one here for the last pick as the Rumble is going to be locked away. I love Equalizer and Bullet Time. That is a cool combo. Incredibly strong combo. And I have liked the Viego into teams that are really have a strong, uh, strong uh, type of early skirmishing draft, right? That are really looking, or even if they don't get a draft like Fnatic, they'll just go for it. You know these teams, you know that they want to skirmish early, but picking it into a Brom, uh, as well as a Lee LeBlanc, which I think is a really strong 2v2, to me is a risk 
The laning phase for Rumble into Jace, I think, can maybe get punished by Nogari, who we know is incredibly comfortable on this champion. But in terms of team fighting power and overall comp, I think that Rogue have something very similar to what we saw when they played against Domon. There's a lot of mobility here, a lot of threat, but also good team fighting. And if you don't fall too far behind in the early to mid game, this comp can do basically anything you want it to do. Yeah, I, I feel like Rogue is going to have to take a lot of these fights somewhat defensively later on, too. Yeah, in the early game, you could definitely have a lot of power. You can look for a little bit of skirmishing with that Lee Sin pick, but Bullet Time doesn't have a lot of great setup for it in this composition. However, if you do look to take these fights defensively, control vision around these trick points, you can use Bullet Time as a disengage when you do see that Viego come through. But there's a lot of range here on the side of OnePlus Phoenix, so... I, I have to say, I like their draft better. It looks stronger in terms of the ability to control laning early, scales up pretty well, a lot of range, a lot of consistent damage. Yeah, I like it as well. And I, I feel like it is just going back to basics as well. Like, Tien, he had two games on the Javan, and then he's like, all right, that didn't work. Um, guys, let's just do things that we know are good. Doimbi goes to Rise. Obviously, his default champion, Nogari, on Jace. Of course, everyone in the world knows how ridiculously good he is at this champion. And LWX and Crisp on a very standard bottom lane. Crisp with a whole lot of roaming potential can affect the rest of the map and just be basically unkillable because Leona is pretty silly when she presses her W. I just feel like this is a very standard and solid draft to come through from FPX, and I'm looking forward to seeing whether Rogue's Carpet Comp can make things work with that Glacial Fissure and the EQA. Do you like Carpet Comp? Does that work? Yeah. No? yeah. You guys yeah, okay no, I'm on board. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, I feel it. Yeah. We don't have a lot of carpet uh, in Korea compared to when I grew up, so I'm always, I'm always happy to put more carpet in my <laughs> just life. Just one more carpet. Yeah, just any you like more carpets. like shag pile carpet? What, like what? Shag pile carpet. Do you know what shag pile carpet is? It's like the really high type, right? They're really soft. It's like carpet fuzzy. that hasn't had a haircut for two years. Yeah. That sounds like a no for me. I don't That's know. hard to clean, though. <laughs> it's impossible to vacuum. It's very. Yeah. It's it's not exactly the greatest. But if like you get it brand new, you're like, oh my goodness! It's like walking on a mattress. You need like a professional cleaner, I'd imagine. I, I don't know what. It's you rough. Need. I've never had a shack bug. I didn't grow up in the '60s, despite <laughs> how old I am. I didn't quite grow up that uh, that long ago. Just a few years shy, yeah. of course. And. You talked already about how good Crisp has been um, when he's actually able to impact on the Leona. The Leona roams have been a big part of the tournament thus far. Not just Leona, but I think she's been the most iconic because of how uh, unreasonably hard she feels to kill at times. And I do actually like the Rogue bot lane in terms of being able to both match the 2v2 because Brom into an engage support is always going to feel good and the math has been... Uh, widely considered one of, if not the strongest AD carry of the revolution, and the laning pressure is quite strong as yeah, the a Zenith Blade level one, and we're already battling, but Hans Armor creates enough distance between himself and Chris, but it's still a bit of a health advantage here for FPX. ZWX just dancing grenades across them. Yeah, and with range advantage here at level one, MF is really going to struggle to do anything here, so they just have to sit back and wait. She'll, of course, be able to heal up with the pot. And the Biscuit, but still, really nice trade here for FPX early. Yeah, we saw Hansama go for the... Oh, they're going in again. Yeah, level two actually just gained a trip. He's going to get taken down. That timing, utterly beautiful. And first blood for the bottom lane of FW, F, FPX. And LWX, of course. That's why yeah. I had W in my yeah. brain. Too many acronyms down there. But absolutely fantastic play here from FPX's bottom lane. Yeah, and it, it ties into Hansama going for the Presti attack and going for double up level one, which in terms of like trying to get some early poke going, we've seen a lot of Comet MFs as well, which have a little bit more pressure on that first level. Xenoflade also leveled by Crisp, able to actually get on top of Hans. And early leads for the FBX bot lane are not a good sight if you are in a Yuffie, because as we already talked about, Hansama, he was the big win condition for Rogue in their game against Don Juan. And then it also ties into if FPX do look weak, it's generally because the bot side is struggling. If yeah. they are not on the back foot, Nogari has Pryo on top side. Uh, Tiana has been able to find his way uh, throughout the entirety of the jungle. Oh, I do think he might get double scuttled here. Yeah, I, I, I want to point out this this top matchup. You kind of honed in on it for just a second there. But remember, this is a team that against Dom One Kia played Fiddlesticks into Canyon's <laughs> Talon. Yep. And now you're, you've are you picked into Nuggery's Jace as uh, Rumble. So you're going to have a bad time early. It's going to be a lot about absorbing that pressure because there is a reward at the end if you can survive through the hardships. But as we saw with that pick just yesterday, the Fiddlesticks, Surviving through those hardships isn't something that Rogue is able to do uh, so far too much in this group stage with these somewhat niche picks. Yeah, and look, uh, Rumble, 
still works out very, very well when you get to that mid game as well. And if Rogue can get towards some of these early skirmishes and team fights uh, after that level six mark, they can certainly make some things happen. Um, but, you know, that bottom lane not getting uh, off to speed at the beginning is certainly a bit of a worry here for Rogue as Crisp walks over reward. So Larson knows what's going on, but probably doesn't know that Tien is there as well as Doinby going to get chained up. But uh, not actually going to move out of the way. Doesn't want to break those chains. Now LWX just underneath this turret by himself. Trimby runs on forward. That's going to be the Winter's Bite as LWX is going to get stunned up. They're not going to dive the turret or anything like that. And Crisp makes his way back down. Yeah, really nice uh, just knowing that Crisp had roamed there. Just get a, go for an aggressive trade. Very well played. Uh, this is very, very risky here. Don't mind the counter gank timing though for Inspired. Turns up, Nogari's going to get queued. Taking down to 200 health, but he stands his ground. It does a fair bit of work there to Inspire, but is still just going to walk away with not very much of a health bar. Don't really want to risk it there as Rogue. You can hold off a little bit longer on showing Inspired, and then maybe they go for a play. But if that backfires, because it is, of course, a 3v2, then you'll be in a rough shape. Uh, don't really uh, need to necessarily go for that. I do want to highlight that, like L uh, LWX, uh, having to use his exhaust that early on might actually become a, a problem. Crisp also went for a roam, which one, didn't work out, but also secondly, has put him on a sizable disadvantage in terms of experience. And if Hansama and Trimby can stay within that lane, hit a level six timing window and find a kill or two to kind of get Hans rolling, that could be a good way for Rogue to kind of get a grasp on this game. Because thus far, FBX, they haven't been able to blow it open, but a 1k gold lead at this early on in the game is still sizable. Yeah, it certainly is. And I think that the bot duel of FBX will be very aware of that potential timing because bullet time as six is hit is such a terrifying uh, ultimate. It's one of the strongest you can get in the game in terms of the laning prowess. So just going to be something they have to be aware of here. In terms of priority, though, they have so much control right now, FBX do. It's hard to imagine a world where they don't end up winning this Rift Herald fight. And that's with a Rumble that can stack at very, you know, early stages of the game. Such an important ultimate on top of the team fight. But, I mean, getting that prio and rotating over to the Herald is going to be the first step. And it's going to be the toughest one, I'd say, here for Rogue. And Braun is also incredibly strong at 5v5s in terms of laying into engage reports. But his setup for ganks is not as good. And we kind of seen that uh, Doombi thus far has been able to just shove in the wave, and he's never really been at danger of getting punished. Either his team is hovering around the side, and thus far, he hasn't actually found an opening, but he will continue to keep looking for them. And if he does find one and we also get a kill on him, it might be a rough go. Yeah, and he's down by about a wave or something like that. And by being able to leave his lane so, so often and only paying that as the price, you'll take that any day of the week. So FPX, as you can see, a whole lot of vision. Their line of control wards across the map, absolutely beautiful. And they're just going to continue to move further forward in this game. We've got under a minute until that Rift Herald does come up. Level sixes should be available uh, here for the bottom side as Larson pulling that wave on over. This is that timing you were talking about where they have the level six advantage, Crisp is level four, but not going to be able to actually do anything with it. And it's not really that big of an edge on the bottom side of the map there alone. That ward in the river next to the Dragon Pit is going to make it so. Rotation over from Larson, who also doesn't have prio, is not realistic here. So unfortunately, there's not really much Rogue can do before this Herald fight. Even having to use the Equalizer here to actually clear this wave is no good for Odawamne. And this looks like a free Herald to me. Yeah, that's really big because that is so much of your potential power budget that you have. The Rumble is known for uh, how strong he is around these early game team fights just because of having the one level equalizer, right? It goes back to what, like season three, four, where Rumble yeah. was picked just so you could secure Drakes. And now that fight, it looks like Rogue still might want to opt into it, but it should be a lot harder. You can see three versus two there in the mid lane as now Odawamne having to deal with Nogri. He's just going to combo him. Bombed him away as Chris, now down to about half health as Inspired has to safeguard his way out. Didn't want to go too deep on that one as Tian in the meantime is just taking Shelly by his lonesome Odawamne looking to try and get down here the flash forward from Nogri. It's a lot of damage and that is the Rumble just taking down a solo kill for Nogri for the second for the game for FBX. But it's not over just yet. Trimby's still in the middle of this fight as Tian, the Heartbreaker comes in. The bullet time is avoided. And he gets himself out of there in the form of the Braum. Oh man, that's the dream value there on the Viego to shut down the bullet time there at the end of the fight. And 
going into this tournament, I was so impressed with Rogue's first Herald and first Drake control. Their setup on objectives in the early game is so good. And this is another one of those scenarios where if they had the proper tools, if they had that equalizer just now coming off the cooldown, this is a fight you could maybe win. The rotation was almost perfectly timed there for Hansama, who's still got that extra push in the bottom lane, but it's not enough because the team fighting is so clean for FPX here. And I mean, it's it's a really tough scenario now because now the gold lead is going to balloon even further. And while the jungle matchup is better than it was last time, as we look at the new X Effect replay here, the topside matchup is still Ooh. so rough as Trimby. That's a flash. As Audio X does have the passive on him, but Crisp is going to make his way in now. Not level six yet, so Soul Flare not available. As he does land the Zenith Blade, however, that's a deadly flourish as LWX trying to get some damage down. Trimby is a pretty beefy Braum. He'll be absolutely fine in FPX. Thinking about a potential dive, but I don't think they're going to go for it. Especially with uh, Inspired still in the area. They know that the ult was placed. Uh, but as I was getting into, uh, remember the game against Dalmon where Khan really was able to get the better end of Oduanne. And we see it similarly here. Nogari gets his Jace. They get the counter pick in the Rumble. And then getting shoved in in lane and falling behind to a certain extent in CS, I don't think is the end of the world. But then the combination of that Equalizer having to be invested just to clear the wave. And Oduanne then trying to roam, match the rest of his team and help out with a Herald that might have already been gone, only to then get solo killed, meaning that no matter what happens, FPX are going to be up a person, makes it so much harder. And now again, a friendly deficit for Rogue. The Drake goes over to FPX as well. They should be able to just make it out cleanly here. They still have the Herald in the docket. They're feeling good. Yeah, and it, it feels bad as Rogue, right? Because you've got these high value level sixes and it, it's both the neutral objectives on the map being taken for free uh, by FPX and actually grabbing a little bit extra in that Herald fight. See where the rogue can continue to move on forward. It's still a good team fight. And of course, if you can layer all of those ultis together, things could definitely work out as Nogri. No flash, remember. Larson looks for the chains, doesn't find them. Is now Nogri looking to turn it onto Oduamne, but he's just going to get burnt down. And Larson picks up that kill in the end. Doimbi turns up a little bit later. Is in the meantime on the bottom side of the map. Rogue doing it again. And I guess, no, it's not a team fighting composition. They're just going to take picks around the map. That's what it's built for, gentlemen, right? Yeah, I mean, if you're able to get these small windows to find mistakes out of FPX, you take it any time you can, every opportunity you get, you're going to look for that extra gold. Grabbing the teleport there away from Doimbi as well is going to feel like a really nice win here for Rogue. Small baby steps potentially back into this game, but the problem still stands that now the item spikes are starting to get hit, the Eclipse is online here for Nuggery. The next fight isn't going to be any easier, but at least you're one step closer. Clearly has been an inversion of Rogue time. Uh, well, now their mid game is just <laughs> insane. <laughs> because this is this follows the same pattern, right? And and something that I really do have to give them credit for, and that is easy to underestimate, is the mental fortitude of again taking such a rough fight, falling behind against a team that coming into the tournament was touted as one as the absolute favorite. And yeah, they've shown weakness, but still going for this practice place is essential. Might get collapsed on now though. Yep, Chris gonna clear out that ward. Trimby gonna do the same thing, as that is gonna be a whole bunch of plates raining down onto FPX. Hex flash to come over there as Chris just pays a visit. Is Han Sama battling against LWX? That's the bullet time. He's taken down relatively low, but not he's teleported in. That's the curtain call, and Han Sama doesn't have a whole lot of places Ooh. to go. He's playing some DDR pretty decently here. Is now trying no. to work out when he has the opportunity. He's got no. this strut available as well, and he gets himself out. Inspired is he here. Do? That was an escape room at like the hardest possible level in Han Sama. He thought all the way through it. Well, I mean, that was actually insane to watch. I mean, this is why this player, uh, Han Sama, is considered by many the best AD carry in this group. His positioning is so good, his control is so good. And here we go back to the play that we saw earlier, which was very straight up overextension into a Brom ult. There should never be an opportunity for Trey to just hit a Jin point blank. But the desk was talking about, you know, maybe Han Sama, best AD in, in, in the group. Well, that sold me. That was incredible. Able to sidestep multiple shots, able to side the, the shock blast of Jace. Spend enough time so that you can flash over that wall. Whew. Yeah, it was really clean. Really, really nicely done. Only got hit by one bullet as well off that curtain call. Very nicely done. So uh, certainly making things work as now Doimby takes down the uh, top outer turret. That's going to be the first of the game for, S uh, for FPX. Indeed, a lot of extra farm coming through here. And remember, guys, our final match of the day. Uh, Faker Daga against Faker himself, 100 Thieves versus T1. It's going to be a banger.
make sure you check it out. As uh, In the meantime, we have FPX versus Rogue. Yeah, it was our Mercedes featured matchup, of course. The big one yeah. of the day there at the end. We'll see how that ends up uh, going. It's a really awesome one to conclude the night. As Larson has actually been able to get away with so much here on the top side of the map, and he's LeBlanc, so that's just how it goes. It's really difficult to punish this champion. Now they're trying to set up here. Actually, Ooh, chains connect. Game. Yeah, Trimby going to come on in, but he's a little bit too late. And uh, yeah, Tian was just in the right place at the right time. Counter, uh, caster Curse there, I think, a little <laughs> bit. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> has inspired looking for it here as well as Tian's trying to keep himself alive. Doinby, though, to protect his jungler, Crisp, roaming up at the same time. Solar Flare's available as well. He can use it over this wall, but he blast cones in instead. Looks for the Zenith Blade, and he will find it. Still holding onto the ult. He still has even more CC available. In the meantime, it's another solo kill from Nogari uh, somewhere on the map. I think it was on the bottom bottom lane. Everything's just happening all at once here. And you understand the sentiment for Larson because he knows I was able to carry almost against Dumbon. I am reasonably fed, but flashing forward like that is oh, oh Nogari. There's the bullet time. Just caught back in, I think, just a little bit. I mean, you've got to be so careful. Like, Han Samba is starting to get some extra gold he's not supposed to have in this game. He already <laughs> is 30 CS up. And this is one of those players, you know, I'm getting a little bit of flashes of Doggo from even the play-ins where yeah, you give man. this misfortune too much money, and then suddenly this mid-game becomes free. And it is those opportunities that Rogue need to look for, right? So I understand the sentiment, but even with people that are helping you in the area, you can't flash forward on the turret like that. And how, how does Nuggery do it again? We'll um, see. Mini wave here. Yeah, well, Odo overheats, so he, he doesn't, yeah, doesn't really get to do anything, and then Nogari just, wow, takes him out. That's a Korean Jace right there. Yep. I wouldn't have made that assessment if I was Nogari, you know? Like, he's he's down so much more health, and he's just like, no, if I hit all of my buttons, does the math in his head, I do, yeah, exactly that amount of damage. Uh, Oduame doesn't really have items online just yet. He's been so bullied in this early game. And it just continues, you know, being pulled off the map like that's going to cost you a lot of experience and cost you a lot of gold. This is going to be another Rift Herald crashing through extra turret here for FPX. They have so much control over the map now. And these next few objective fights, I mean, as Rogue here, you have a comp that can do well in team fights. You can set up some picks. If you do that, poke damage is Larson, but he's not really Ooh. online just yet. Hans 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 Did you see that, that <laughs> yeah. double up? That was a lot of damage. And that is what you're looking towards as Rogue. We have seen that FPX, uh, as, as well as I think there are individual playing in this game, uh, are still capable of making mistakes, right? Walking up too far, maybe over aggressing. And if you can get a kite back going as Rogue on top of either a bullet time, an equalizer, or ideally both, you will feel a lot better and there is the opportunity. But as Wolf already pointed out, there is a lack of lockdown and it's not like FPX really has to hard for us with the amount of range that they have available. They're up to Drakes, right? Which means that if they get the mountain in five minutes, which how the state of the game is currently feeling, I don't know if Rogue can really wrestle control back before then, it's going to feel very similar to what we saw last game, where then Rogue are going to be forced to move up even if they don't want to. And with this comp, the lack of hard engage, the lack of lockdown available, that's going to feel really, really bad. Yeah, you want a comp that's going to be coming to you. You've got things like the Equalizer, and the answers that Rogue does have, not quite necessarily working out. It relies on having vision control, but they're having that controlled to them. Although they do have a lot of wards on the map right now. It's FPX coming out of base now, looking to try and clear things up. They will do so. Chris moving on in as Hans Sama. He's feeling pretty good. The only one on Rogue at the moment. Feels like he has complete control. And the gold lead was about 3k. It's now slipped back to about 2. And yes, those drakes are a problem, but this is by no means over or anything like that at this stage. Boston yeah, in the not. side lane, looking to try and get some work done to this outer turret. The problem in this game that Rogue is facing very quickly is that they aren't going to be able to remove uh, these wards very safely uh, in both objective pits, nor will they be able to deep ward themselves because the waves are constantly crashing into them. Inspired and Trimby both can't really get in there to sweep. They can't place deep wards. This means FPX can always threaten and there's no fear that a LeBlanc is going to appear. It's still going to be a flash forward though as there's the Glacial 
Fissure. LWX is going to avoid it though, as in goes in spite, gets the kick back. As Nogger is going to get taken down, the bullet time is huge as well, but Tian, he's getting all of the resets, and now the curtain call comes in. It's a double kill for the Jin, and now the Realm Warp on top of Han Summer is now going to flash, not going to get deadly flourished, and Larson's still alive as well. Tian needs to be a little careful here as the Heartbreaker comes on over the wall. Not going to be able to find any more resets, but it was a fight win from FPX. I mean, Viego is just so slippery, too, in these <laughs> types of scenarios. He can actually chase like that. He's like, ooh, can I get away with this turret as well here on the bottom side? He'll not be able to do so, but these are the fights that Rogue are looking for. They have these small windows, these tiny opportunities, and yet still, at this stage of the game, they're not powerful enough to pull it off. And I understand the kind of inclination of Rogue to try and pull the trigger there, but you do see the limitation that they somewhat run into, right? Even if uh, FBX being this far up, it takes Trinity everything just to get on top of Noggery and not, uh, lock him down for a little bit. That's not enough. It's a really, really nice uh, kind of split fight that's created that behind some of the bullet time, but the actual damage isn't quite there. And then as soon as someone dies, the Viego starts resetting, and there's really nothing for you to do, especially with how far behind individually some of the members of Rogue are. And now you took one bad fight in an opportunity you didn't really have to. And now that subsequent Drake fight in two minutes, 4k called behind, giving over a Mountain Sword point against an FBX, is not going to be a fun time. Definitely not. Larson actually taking half of his health bar from an empowered shock blast. Nogri is gigantic yeah. at this point in time. Ghostblade now complete as well. He can just freely split push with no inhibitions whatsoever. He can run real fast to get himself out of there. Two critical flashes down for Rogue as well. Inspired, not going to have that extra range to look for deep Ooh, kicks. Larson finds the double chain though, as there's the flash out from Nogri. Actually high value. Now Tien has to get out as well, uses the ultimate. Solar Flare comes through just for a slow and a bit of zoning as Rogue actually biting back a little bit here, although they don't get any kills, but they get a couple of summoner spells. Definitely feels yeah. good. And they get Nuggery's Flash. I was talking about the Flash being down inspired, not going to be able to have that extra kick, uh, or extra closer on the kick there to get behind somebody like Nuggery. But Nuggery now can't escape from that. If Larson is able to find him and get on top of him in the side lane or as he's rotating into an objective, there's some kill pressure there. Blowing up Nuggery before a fight starts eliminates so much of that poke damage that FPX needs to lead into an objective. So they're still hoping. Getting that flash is actually quite huge. And with the itemization that FPX has gone for, there is not like we've seen a lot a lot of focus on plated steel caps. Instead, we see a lot of magic resist getting picked up. And that's going to make Odo, who is considerably behind on this uh, Rumble's job, even harder. And it puts more pressure on Sama, who, while he's been playing exceptionally, has thus far also finished his collector um, and will be able to do a lot of damage. It also means that for FPX, it's pretty singular. If you ever kill Hansama, the remainder of Rogue should not be able to do a lot. So Rogue needs to be so incredibly clean in making sure that Hans can do the most damage that he is able to. But the setup for that, I think, is quite hard, especially with the amount of poke that's available. A single Shock Blast on top of Hans, if Trimby isn't there to keep him safe, is going to immediately put him out of the fight. Yeah, it's going to be very, very difficult. And they've been completely blocked from this Dragon Pit as well. It's like, yes, Rogue have some control around, you know, this opening around their mid-outer turret. But <laughs> yeah. that ain't gonna do. I like how you said that. <laughs> yeah. It's a tiny space, but it's there. Yeah, there's a little yeah, bit of space there. Not anymore. Yeah. Um, I yeah. mean, at least they know, at least they know that FBX is not going to walk up and kill them after they take this break as well. But I mean, yeah. I think you said it in so few words that uh, <laughs> there's not a lot of vision control, and this has just been a, a fundamental issue. When Nuggery got so far ahead, the side lanes are so well controlled from them, and Doinby, who's been down on CS a majority of the game, is now also starting to take a lead and farm. That's usually how the copy pasta goes, but I gotta say, you know, Rogue here, hanging on by a thread, weren't able to take that fight because of the vision problem. But I think there's still hope if they can get those picks. Like, there's, there are ways to which uh, their composition can blow up a single target, like Nuggery, like Toynbee, if mistakes are made. The proactive plays are going to have to continue to be there. Hopefully not the overextension like we saw before. Here's one of them. Yeah, it's a big teleport to come on in here. Gale Force forward from Hansama as Nogari is going to be dead yet again. That's how you do it. you got to find picks like this. Got to go for Nash. Got to try and force it as hard as you can, surely. But it looks like they don't want to take the risk and understand it because it is really high risk. But at the same time, I don't know if you don't try to push as hard as you can here as Rogue, if it's going to be enough. Yeah, well, it's 30 seconds, but there's teleport available from Nogari and Rogue not really wanting to risk it all for that particular moment. I don't really blame them. 
No, I, I think it's probably the safer call. But that's my issue is, is the safer call going to be enough? Yeah, in, when are you yeah, going to have in, a better opportunity? Yeah. Exactly, because yeah. in three minutes, um, you are going to have to win that fight because the one thing that you still have available as Rogue is Burst, right? Outside of Hansama being able to like channel a full uh, ultimate into five people, which should never happen. Um, he is also going to be very Burst. He would double up with the crit uh, and then Larson is self-explanatory. And then if you lose the ability to do things like this because of the Mountain Soul Shield, I don't see a way back in for Rogue. So it's so incredibly important that they get that fight going. But yeah, again, yeah, they pick up Nigari, uh, Nogari and it's nice, but what else do you get? Yeah, I mean, the other thing too is Doinby was pushing bottom super far under that inner turret. He had teleport available. He's got Realm Warp. You can't punish him either. And it, it feels like we've seen so many of these games here in this meta in Worlds where one pick isn't enough because it's just so easy to rotate back over if you don't have control over the map. The team that loses someone can actually punish the Baron and win the game like in that moment. It happened yeah. multiple times. Yeah. And it's a 3.5k gold lead. FPX is still very, very strong in this moment as well. Tian is terrifying on this Viego. LPL Viegos, man. It's, uh, yeah. it's becoming a bit of a thing. As now the, mid the bottom lane of Rogue just trying to move forward, clear out mid wave, but without that turret, and it's so dark on the map. It's just so, so difficult. And as FBX is now in the well, well on the way of the third game, I think we can safely say that um, while I don't think they reached the level that maybe some of us were expecting coming into the tournament, they are starting to look more and more like themselves, right? The Dumb One game, Metal Re didn't feel right, execution wasn't there. Then against C9, there were a couple of openings, but in the end they were able to make it. And then this game has been their cleanest thus far, given up a few kills left and right, but in terms of objectives, they've had an iron grip of this game. And most importantly, it feels to me like they're also very aware that if they don't majorly misstep and give Rogue the opportunity to try and get a big jungle skirmish to get their way back in the game, I say that, yeah, possible opportunity for a potential fight, but there's just too much vision. FPX, yeah. what they've been doing beautifully this game is dotting I's and crossing T's, like all of it. It's like the only letters they've been writing this entire game Yeah, because and they have complete control. To, to go back to Chronicler's point as well, like that was one of my points going into today is I feel like in terms of expectations, FPX has been the most disappointing team actually of world so far, just in, in the fact that everyone was saying, this team could go all the way. You know, I was myself personally looking at EDG as the strongest team from the LPL, but most people disagreed. Most people said FPX. Then that Dom1 Kia series really disappointed us. It was a bit shaky against Cloud9. And I think what they've learned through that loss in that very shaky game against C9 is how to minimize mistakes. We still see a few of them here. We do see a few overextensions, but they are taking a lead, taking vision control, and playing about as standard of a game of League of Legends as you can from ahead, given the draft that they have. And that's what you want to see. That's the consistency you're looking for here to make sure you get out of this group in top two. And in 30 seconds, it's going to be the fight that very possibly might decide the game. If Rogue uh, don't blow it open big here, if they don't get the big bullet time, the equalizer, right? backline access, I don't know if they're going to be able to get away back into this game, Atlas. Yep, and FPX, they're just going to grab control of that mid wave, brute force it, and now move in towards this river. 10 seconds to go. Nogri on the bottom side of the map, looking to pick up that minion wave. Rogue moving on over. They are on top of that control ward. They have to get here. They have to try and stop this. This Mountain Soul is going to be absolutely massive for FPX. Make it rain coming on down. Chris. Couldn't quite get any flank or anything like that off at the moment. Inspired moves on over as well, but again on top of a ward. Trimby isn't though as he throws the Winter's Bite over the wall. Larson dashing on forward, looking for LWX, looking to take him out as Hansama channels the ultimate, but everyone in FPX does get themselves out. Inspired, not able to lock down Chris. As now the curtain call comes on in. This is just to soften up the members of Rogue, get themselves out of this dragon pit. But FPX's health bars aren't exactly the highest right now. Rogue certainly with a life lead. Yeah, even with the magic resist that Chronicle was talking about earlier, that equalizer is going to do quite a bit of chip here. Look at the angle for Inspired as well. Yeah, teleport coming on in from Nogari as well on the bottom side. This could be a 50-50, and it's one that Rogue needs to win. Crisp 
He's too low. He can't actually go in now as the Drake looking to try and reset. They're not going to let it down to 2,000 health. The Zoimbi immediately goes gold and Trimby's very low. Crisp flashing out there outside of the pit as Zoimbi looks to try and grab the Drake himself, but he's not able to. He stays alive though for so long. What was he, invisible? That was ridiculous. They're not able to take him out. And FPX lose no one. They do lose the Drake. Rogue saved that. But somehow, it is no one on FPX dying and then picking up two kills. Three and, kills. And I don't know if that's that's worth it, because yes, as you point out, you've staved off immediate defeat. But giving over a Baron to FPX with the amount of seats that they have available might be just as bad. And that is the reward that FPX have rightfully earned after how strong their early game has been. How they've been able to play around their dominance in multiple lanes, pick up the Baron, increase their gold leads, Looking rough for Rogue. I mean, also, FPX just with such discipline in that fight, they were willing to give the Drake to look for the team fight win instead, which is, it's a win-win scenario for them. And going back to, is it worth it for Rogue, you don't really have good options. Both choices no are choice, bad. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Both choices are bad, so what do you really do here? But I really appreciate that FPX don't just go, well, they don't pull a Gen.G and kind of walk away from the Drake and say, well, we're going to give the Drake and we're just going to walk away from this fight. No, they go all in on this because even if they fail this and lose the Drake, this is still a very recoverable situation, but they deal with it so well. Look at Dwayne B on the side here. Survives with so few health and still helps turn this fight around as Nuggery is very happy to clean up house. Yeah, it was like half a health bar. Uh, sorry, half a health point for Dwayne B and just... Larson didn't auto-attack him, wasn't quite able to make that one work out, but wouldn't have even mattered, right? Even if he falls down, it's still a win for FPX. And here you see a lot of the elements that have made FPX such a terrifying team is their team fighting and their limits. And we saw this from LNG earlier as well. Um, it's, it's just insane. Like, how well aware, how much damage they can take. It's so hard to deal with. Yeah, it's real tough. Now FPX looking to push 1-3-1 available here with both the Jace and the Rise. Pretty fantastic in the side lane, pushing on forward. Zoe going to be uh, waving sadly here. Yeah, the Larson Red Bull is going to bounce forward. Red Bull power play is ticking up here. I mean, Rogue, you steward eye time right now. And oh my goodness. Look at the damage your two backs channeling right now. But FBX have such a free push. Going on the side lane. Realm warping forward. They want to end this game very soon. They can force a fight this way. And if Rogue don't respond, they slowly lose the game. And the problem of having three soul points is that you, you only need to get one. Yeah. Um, you know, like, okay, the first one didn't work out. Who cares, says FBX. We shove in multiple lanes. We're going to fight these turrets. If we get an opening, cool. If not, just need to win the next fight, and we will be still in a prime position to take over this game. And now for Rogue, like, what are your angles to get back into this game? I think it remains the same. You need either someone on FPX to misstep, get blown up by a combo of Larson and Hansama, finding maybe a double tap, a chain, a combination of that, or walking into a multi-man old layer yeah. combo. I mean, look at the items too. <laughs> X-Drinker's up now for Nuggery. So, Doing Beast got his Banshee's Veil. Killing him even in this scenario is not very easy to pull off. In fact, yeah, he's just not even possible. Is there's the flash out from Ansama. He channels the bullet time, but Dombey was nowhere near it. He's able to get himself out of the way. Had no flash available, but he's still going to be all right. The curtain call comes in. That is going to be the Gale Force getting Ansama to relative safety. Trimby not going to be so lucky. He's got a big door, but unfortunately, he doesn't have his life. And FPX with five members on the top side of the map think that this is their avenue into the rogue base. Certainly looks that way, even though we've had some Stormtrooper shots here for LWX this game. <laughs> you think I'm saying Rebel? No, 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 I, I, no, no I, can't, I can't let LWX take credit for missing those. That's Hans Sama oh, yeah, going no, full Luke Skywalker, yeah. making sure that all of them miss. But as you point out, I, I don't know if it will matter. It, it, I just certainly don't think it is going to matter, unfortunately, at this stage. This is looking like the beginning of the end. It certainly is, as the Nexus turrets now under fire. Okay. FPX not going to bite off more than they can chew. This has been very disciplined. I mean, outside of Nogri dying all the time in side lanes, but uh, we know that that's how a lot of teams with Nogri win, is by Nogri yep. dying in side lanes and then the rest of the it's, team getting advantages. He's been doing it for, what, like two and a half, three years yeah. at this point? It's a tradition. He's, uh, he's, he's made it a strategy. Yeah. Well, I, I got to say, though, we've seen both the extremely disciplined, disciplined FPX in this game 
but also the pull the trigger, be aggressive, and absolutely all in in team fights side of FPX in this game, and usually get one or the other, which leads to a weak side, but not in this game, not in this particular case. But FPX did make a mistake here because by pushing so hard and not actually getting anything, they've given Rogue the opportunity to set up a vision line around this dragon. Inspired is in flank position, and do not forget how dangerous this team fight still can be. And this time he's actually unseen on the vision that FPX has. So this is going to be very, very important. In fact, know. they're a bit lax on the vision. To be honest, but they get that ward over. Larson is spotted. And FPX just setting themselves up here in this river. There's another curtain call to Spide come on forward, and Inspired's going to step on the trap. And He's yet not he, there. he doesn't have the smite in this pit. That was very, very strange. He was looking for the flank. Instead, he tries to brute force it here as the bullet time comes down. But Doinby has the best item in the game, and he's going to be completely fine. Now, LWX able to walk on in with guns blazing. It's a double kill so far. I believe that's the triple, as the teleport is going to get Larson back to his base. But Nogri is there first, and he's looking to take down these Nexus turrets. This, I think, is it, ladies and gentlemen. FPX. They're going to be able to grab themselves the Mountain Soul, and then they'll finish off Rogue. That was very cute from Nogri as well, as he gets the solo kill to finish this one off. FPX looking so much better in this game. Move to 2-1. and one. Yeah, a lot of discipline in this game from FPX, and I, I really love to see the change in their playstyle. Humbled by those first two games, I think, in a lot of ways, and for Rogue, I think a lot of people will criticize some of the team fights they decided to take to the mid to late game. But as we pointed out several times, lose lose scenarios make you look bad no matter which one you take. So, a lot of those fights they were desperate to take, and they had a composition to where.